So lately we've been getting a lot of news on the upcoming 1.3 update. This one is going to be one of the larger ones that is more content focused so there's going to be a lot to look forward to. Like the new character Koga. We got this image a few days ago and this gives us some insight on his weapon. It looks like he has some kind of claw weapons that's sort of like Wolverine's claws in a way, although I imagine they're not in his arm, so it looks like he'll have at least some aspect of melee in his kit. He also appeared to do this to the Paladins game Twitter logo, a really cool tease there. Then there was this tweet that gives us his name. Hyrus Martini had also confirmed that they had given us his name already and this was the only name that's been revealed so this character is in fact named Koga. The tweet says that he was framed and that even Zin believed them and turned against Koga. So it's pretty easy to sympathize with this character even if he may technically be evil. His master, who he looked at as family, doubted him and in his eyes turned his back on him. This is some Anakin Ahsoka level stuff. Also, for those of you who wanted sexier males to pair with the females, here you go. I'm pretty damn straight, but damn, does this guy have some nice abs. Then there's this image that says the Thousand Hands will not forget the day they turned their backs on me. Koga appears to be hellbent on seeking vengeance, and I imagine he won't stop till the entirety of the guild is brought down. I like Zin and all, but I'd personally love to see Koga go all Kratos on him in the guild. Now we're going to focus on all the news that came out with the Q&A livestream today. Many of you may know that Realm Royale is having its hitboxes reduced, and many have wondered why that hasn't been done to Paladins despite all the requests. They said that Realm Royale has one static hitbox for all of its characters, so it's easy to tighten it up and make it better. However, with Paladins, it's a completely different story. With Paladins, there are many different characters with very different sizes, and these characters were designed and balanced around their hitboxes. So if they were to take all of them and reduce them across the board, it would really cause a lot of problems for the game, and I agree. This is something I've been telling people in my Discord and on my live streams. It's something many people think they want, but in reality they don't, because it would cause a lot of balance problems and inconsistencies in the game. I mean, just look at what the hitbox reductions did to Talus's Punch and Makoa's Hook. You have abilities with travel time on them that have hitscan hitboxes. Talus's Punch would go right through people and they had to increase its size because of it. While with Makoa, his hook now feels pretty inconsistent at times because it wasn't designed around that hitbox. So with that in mind, imagine how many things would go wrong if every hitbox was reduced. They spoke about Sky's rework and how it was coming very soon. They only spoke about the visual side of it this time around. Her current default skin, while of course looking really good, doesn't really fit the fantasy theme of Paladins very well, so it makes sense they'd want to update it. Hopefully they don't pull a Victor and mess with Sky's face and hair when all that's needed is an outfit rework. Now again, they only spoke about the visual rework, but they have confirmed in the past that her kit is also receiving a rework, and I hope they haven't gone back on it. Because Sky really needs it and there's no point in updating her look if she's one of the worst characters in the game. Matchmaking came up and they talked about how they were both testing a new matchmaking algorithm in Smite Conquest and in Paladin's Casual Siege. They've been testing it and tuning it and in 1.3 it'll be placed into ranked with likely many more updates to it. So fingers crossed that this algorithm will be a big improvement on the last one. Matchmaking is one of the most difficult things to perfect in really any game, and they say that they always have a team working on it consistently. A question came up about Moji and if she would be receiving a skin soon. They said a summer theme skin would be coming her way in the 1.4 update, and that it was going to be awesome. Now for summer skins, I know we automatically think of swimsuits, but I don't think they're going to be putting a bikini on Moji. I can totally see them putting her in a one-piece swimsuit with little floaties on her arms and a snorkel on her face to cover her mouth and replace her glasses. I can also totally see her lizards being a giant living floaty as well and spitting out water. Moji is one of my personal favorite characters in the game and I can't wait to see her finally get a skin. Hopefully they buff her along with that skin since Moji is one of the worst characters in the game right now outside of the lower tiers. They spoke about gold sinks that were coming in 1.3 as well. Some people have an excess of gold. Like I personally have 6 million lying around and I have no intention in spending it on character levels. They said we would be able to equip multiple emotes for characters 
and sprays and that it'd take gold to be able to do this. They also said there would be 7 new announcer packs coming for gold. They still aren't character announcer packs unfortunately, but they are in different languages so that's pretty cool. For those of you that are looking to play Paladins on the Switch, they said it would be going free to play very soon, so look out for that. Now this is a really exciting feature that is finally making its return. TDM and Onslaught are being made into separate queues once again and you'll be able to multi-queue once again as well. If you don't know what multi-queuing is, it's a feature that lets you pick multiple modes to queue for at once. So you could for example queue for Onslaught and Siege at the same time and get either or. There are also new maps coming as well. This Abyss themed map is coming to TDM and it has jump pads. No map besides the Rise of Furia event map has this, so this is pretty unique and interesting. I'd love to see somebody get sniped out of the air after using a jump pad. It'll also be really cool to see how high characters with vertical mobility will be able to get with the jump pad. Now, this map also has the alt buffs as well, and these buffs give you full alt. I don't know how I feel about this. In my opinion, it doesn't really have a place in the game. Imagine somebody alting to kill somebody who's going for the buff, then they get it, get their alt right back, and get another free kill off of it. I really doubt it's going to make for a very fun experience. Last but not least, they were asked if there were any LGBT characters in the game, and to a whole lot of surprise, they said Fernando is gay. I think we were all pretty convinced that he was the straightest man in the realm, since he hits on nearly every female character. But I guess he had us fooled. I would love to get some lore behind why he flirts with all the ladies if he's gay. Hopefully we get some answers soon. I was really expecting them to say Ash. That would have made a lot more sense I think. Anyway, that's it for all the news. I know there's a lot, but what do you guys think about this stuff? Let me know in the comments below. And that's pretty much it guys, I want to thank you all for watching. I very much appreciate it, and I'm gonna see you guys later. bye!